the manly. Oh, wait, crap. Let me flip it over. There you go. Focus. The, oh, dang it. The manly reference cardioid is broken and I have to fix it. And this is just part of being a studio owner or having a studio of any kind, fixing stuff when it's broken. I have no idea what's wrong with this. I have some ideas. Let's see if we can figure it out. Hey everybody, Resident Loser Jeremy here. Sadly, my favorite mic that I use here at the studio, Manly Reference Cardioid, is not working, and I don't know why. I have an idea that this could be the tube inside of it, but all this to say, I wanted to film the process of troubleshooting a mic and figuring out what's wrong. I could send it in, especially right now with the things going on in the world, shipping is a little unpredictable, as well as if a company's staffed up and I have put in a service ticket, but who knows when I'm actually gonna get this thing in to get fixed, so. I have sessions. If this is something easy that I can fix myself, I'm gonna try to do it. So I figured why not film it and show you that sometimes the issues that we're having with mics can easily be solved. Now, the Manly Reference Cardioid is a tube condenser. If you feed it 48 volts or phantom power, you can damage the microphone. I did not do that. It's basically always set up in an ISO booth on a dedicated chain that never changes. So I've had this mic for like six years and used it almost every day, although they should last longer. It's, there's a good chance it's the tube. I happen to have an extra tube laying around, so we're gonna try it out and we're just gonna see if changing the tube can fix this problem. So on the mic itself, there's gonna be two screws at the bottom here and all we have to do is unscrew that, tear it apart. I, right off camera, I have the power supply here. We are unplugged. We're unplugged from wall power. The box itself is turned off, but we want to unplug the microphone before we do anything. So pretty much all microphones, you're gonna have a couple screws at the bottom and that's gonna let you pull the mic itself out. So you just wanna be careful here not to lose the screws. With a mic like this, I'm gonna to need to be really careful not to shear off the pad switch that's right there as I pull it out. So I'm just gonna wiggle it gently. And the whole thing comes apart. There it is. There's the mic. And most mics look pretty much like this. If you're careful about this, you're not gonna do damage to the microphone. Only thing you definitely don't wanna do is touch the capsule or let things spill onto the capsule. So you wanna have a clean workspace to work with here. If we flip it over, there's our tube. We're gonna see if this is causing our issue. And with the Manleys in particular, they use different types of preamp tubes on this. If you want to replace them exactly, you can look at the serial number that's just inside the shock mount of these things. If it had, it'll have like a T, there'll be a number in that serial. This is like C-A-R-D-T, C-A-R-D-X, telling you what type of tube is inside. Mine is a T, so I'm gonna replace it with a 12AX7T if I want to. Now, there's a whole lot of documentation out there where people are putting different tubes in these mics to kind of give it different characteristics. That would be an interesting test, but I'm just gonna go for what was in there before because I am troubleshooting this mic. I don't know if it's exactly the tube, but we're gonna figure it out. So I got my replacement tested tube here. We're just gonna reinstall this. The tube socket is up in here and it's it's kind of awkward to get your hand. If you've ever replaced a tube condenser, it's not a fun time. Because most of the time you're holding a very valuable piece uh, precariously in your hands while you try to shove a tube in a place where it really doesn't seem like it fits. Oh, get in there. It doesn't help that the PCB this thing sits on is like flimsy as I'll get out. It's really not flimsy, it's actually pretty stable, but I'm just, you're always nervous you're gonna snap them right off. Get in there. Woo. I hate it, 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 I hate it. Hey, we got it. So carefully, we're going to reinsert the mic itself back into its case. But first I wanna take a look at some other connections here and just kind of double check that everything is on here. There's nothing loose, something that I could see very obviously that could be an issue. I'm wondering if there's a loose connection on the actual connector here, but I can pull that out with the whole mic protected. So I'm going to put this back together. 
There we go. Metal on metal is always a great sound. Carefully put the screws back in. Now I'm hoping when I fire this up, it's gonna work. I still may send this mic in. Realistically, I have no idea how long that's gonna take. Now I'm comfortable and we could all pretty much be comfortable changing the tubes on this and just making sure general things are okay with the mic. If it's a blown cap or something's wrong on the PCB, the capsule itself is, is messed up for some reason, that's not something I'm comfortable fixing. However, making sure I can record with my favorite mic, especially on some of the artists that are coming in. I've worked with these people before. I know I love this mic, so I'm gonna try to get it working if I can. Seems to be in there. So I have the power supply right here. Power supply is currently off, unplugged. We're going into Pro Tools. If there is signal, I should be able to see it. We're gonna go ahead and turn the power supply on. Hey. We had signal. So I had signal on the microphone for just a split second. And as soon as I handled it, it stopped feeding signal. So I think the issue is the cable. And what I don't know is if these are all solder joints or if these are all fittings on. I can't imagine they would just be fit. It does seem to be an issue with the cable. You are trying to reach? You may enter it now. Please hold while I transfer your call. Hi, this is... I'm not able to take your call right now. If you'd like to leave me a message, press 2 or stay on the line and your call will be automatically transferred. If you need help with a pending or recently... Should... This is How can I help you? Uh, hi, Jeremy Mang here. Um, I have a manly reference cardioid. Um, I was doing some troubleshooting on, stopped working for a session today. Come down to it's the cable and I don't have that particular cable. I have a few different tube condenser mics here, but it looks seems like the manly one is proprietary. Um, I didn't know if that's something you guys sell. Mm, okay, gotcha. The cable uh, from the mic to its uh, power supply yeah. thing. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Let me, let me check real quick here. Yeah, it's like a six pin XLR where most, most of my other tube condensers I think are seven, seven pin. Really? Yeah, okay. And this one's like offset at an angle as well. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah, even gotcha. didn't even know what to look for. Right, what they even call that thing. Okay. Uh, let's see if I have anything in stock uh, off that. All right. So I don't have it in. Um, it's not something I carry by itself uh, like that. It's 125 bucks for that cable. I mean, is it is it proprietary or is it something that I can purchase somewhere else? It looks like when I was poking around here that I also have, um, I also can special order a seven pin also from Loughton Audio. I'm sure you can get it for cheaper if it's not the mainly. It's not a, pin out. it's not a seven pin, it's a six pin. Um, okay, all right, it's not, not a seven then, okay. Yeah, whichever, the, the normal, I was saying the normal two condenser ones I have are seven pin, this one was six. Uh, yeah, okay. Was it still the same story? Right, okay. Yeah, any kind of a uh, six pin out um, XLR cable either. For technical support, please visit our website at manly.com where you can fill out a support request. For sales, press one. For parts, press two. If you would still like to be transferred, please remain on hold while your call is transferred. Hi, you've reached the parts department at Manly Labs. The best way to reach this department is by emailing parts at manlylabs.com. Please include your unit serial number and request in the email. Please visit our website at manly.com where you can fill out a support request. Zero. Please hold while your call is transferred. The tone subscriber you have called is not available. Please leave a message after the tone. A great choice calling Vintage King Audio, home of the world's best selection of pro audio gear. <laughs> Thanks for calling Vintage King. May I help you? Hi, my name is Jeremy Meng. Um, I bought a, uh, a manly reference cardioid from you guys. Um, uh, yeah, let me see who 
do I have for you to help you out with that? Okay. Can you hold a moment, please? Gonna live so well Beyond the day we die All oh, baby, you and me I don't know that they have anybody to help me. So it turns out they didn't have anybody to help me. This is editing Jeremy from the future. So a lot has conspired since, uh, but I did find a way to fix the microphone. Let me show you about a different microphone. Either way, the manly is going to be fixed, but in the meantime, I needed to have a mic here. And I think I accidentally fell in love with this thing, which is unfortunate because it's not cheap. But this mic will be getting fixed. Turns out it wasn't the tube, it wasn't the cable. I don't know what it is, neither does Manly. It's in the process of being sent in and hopefully they'll repair it. I will update this video as that happens because I think customer service should be addressed in situations like this. Sweetwater really had no way to help me and, I, and they had no part in the purchase of this microphone, so it's really not on them to make it work. However, they are really, really close to me geographically if I needed to drive to get that replacement cable i could where i purchased the mic from vintage king turns out they just didn't have anything to give me there's really not much they can do manly themselves the people i'm emailing back and forth with are super helpful super attentive and they're responding very very quickly so so that mic will get fixed and we probably will go down some rabbit holes with it anyway back to the video <sighs> If you guys are interested in going a little further with stuff like this, maybe trying out some different tubes on this to see if there's a difference. Just having done this with guitars, I noticed very little difference changing tubes and guitar amps, if any. Uh, mainly like volume, so all things being equal. I don't, I'm not really a tube nut when it comes to guitar amps. I love tube amps, but the process of changing tubes has never yielded me anything that's been like magical. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about that. Rock my world. Start a fight in the comments. But I have read a lot about changing the tubes and mics and that it makes a large difference. I'm willing to give it a try. Right now I put basically the stock tube. Tubes are definitely meant to last for a long time and they shouldn't be something that we have to consume a lot of. But if you guys want to see more stuff like this, let me know. Because this is like the general things of running a studio. It's uh, It can be... Kind of fun to fix the problems if I'm being totally honest with you. Anyway guys, I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. Hit the like button if you like it. Subscribe if you want to see more of me tearing apart stuff and fixing it. So I'll see you guys in the next one.